In this video, we're going to talk about how to graph the marginal cost curve when you have a production possibilities frontier. So we used the following data in a previous video to create a production possibilities frontier. And we assume that you and a group of friends were stranded on an island, right? So you were stranded on an island and all you could produce was food and clothing. And so you had to make trade-offs and think about how much food or clothing you, you could produce. And we graphed the PPF, right? So we plotted each point. So for example, if you were to produce four units of food, that would mean zero units of clothing, right? So four units of food, zero units of clothing, three units of food would give you four units of clothing, right? So th these are the following combinations and we plotted them all out with our PPF, right? So we made our production possibilities frontier. And then we introduced the idea that there's an increasing marginal cost, right? And that actually explains why the PPF usually has this bowed out shape, right? Instead of a PPF, because think about it, a PPF could conceivably just look like this, right? Where you just have a straight line. But instead, we said usually the PPF has this bowed out shape due to the fact that not all resources are equally productive, right? So basically, as we go from, let's say, clothing, right? So where we have zero units of food produced and 10 units of clothing produced, as we go from 10 units of clothing to nine units, so we, we, we produce one unit of food, right? So let's, let's take it here. We start with zero units of food. We're all starving. And we say, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we had food? And so we decide, okay, well, we're going to produce one unit of food. We're going to go from zero to one unit of food. We give up one unit of clothing because clothing goes from 10 to nine, right? So we would say the marginal cost, the incremental cost of producing going from zero units of food to one unit of food, we can see is this amount here, what do we give up? We give up one unit of clothing. So we'd say that the marginal cost of producing one unit of food, when we start with zero units of food, the extra unit is gonna cost us one, right? So that's the marginal cost to produce that first unit of food. But the marginal cost changes. It's not constant, right? If it was a straight line, then it'd just be constant. But we said that the, the whole reason we've got this graph is the marginal cost is going to be increasing. So let's think about it. As we go from one unit of food, and now we say, you know what? It'd be nice to have two units of food. So we produce an incremental, we, we produce an extra unit of food, right? We go up one additional unit of food. Now, look, we have now have to give up two units of clothing, right? If you go back to the numbers, if, if we go from nine to seven units of clothing, we give up two this time to get an extra piece of food. So now the marginal cost here would be two. Now we think, okay, well, what if we wanted a third piece of food? What if we go from two units of food to three units of food? That extra one unit of food, what is the cost? Now, see, look, it's getting more and more of, of our cost. Now our marginal cost is three. And when I say marginal cost, I mean the amount of clothing that we're giving up to get that extra piece of food. And think about it, when we started with zero food and went to one, it only cost us one piece of clothing, right? But now, now we're at, we're at, we've got a marginal cost of three, okay? And it gets worse because when we go we say, okay, well, let's go for the max. Let's go for four units of food from three to four. What is that? We're getting one extra piece of food, but we're giving up four units of clothing this whole distance. See, the distance is getting longer and longer. See, we started out here where we say, okay, and then we got longer and longer and longer. That's because we're going and we're getting this, this marginal cost is increasing. Now the marginal cost to go from three units units of food to four the marginal cost is four units of clothing. So when we, when we have no food at all to give up some clothing to get one piece of food, doesn't cost us much, right? It doesn't cost us much at all. And so we can, we can actually put together a little table and we say, okay, when we have zero units of food, what's the marginal cost of producing one unit of food, right? Marginal cost of producing one unit of food in terms of clothing, right? So we'll say clothing given up. This is the clothing given up to get one extra piece of food. So, and when we got zero food, right, from we go zero, zero to one, we said the marginal cost was one. Okay, so the marginal cost is one. And then when we have one food to go to two, the marginal cost was two. And then three and four, right? So we can just fill that out, three and four. 
And now what we can do is we can graph this. We can graph this little table that we've made here, and that'll tell us something about our marginal cost, which you, you probably already can see just from looking at the numbers. But so when we have, so I've got food here on the x-axis and the marginal cost on the y-axis. So when we have one, uh, zero units of food, the marginal cost of producing one unit of food is one. So zero, one would be right here. Okay. Now, one unit of food, the marginal cost is two. So that would put us here. Two units of food, the marginal cost is three. So we go right here. And then when we have three units of food that make that extra last piece of food, it will cost us four units of clothing. Okay. So we see that actually the marginal cost, this, so this is our marginal cost curve. This is our marginal cost curve. And you see that the marginal cost is increasing. It's an increasing marginal cost. And so why is that? So again, this is this idea that resources, resources are not equally productive, right? So they're not equally productive. And what I mean by that is, so again, let's return to our example. So we're on an island, right? It's, it's a group of us. We've been stranded due to a plane crash. And we have to think about how much food and clothing to produce. Now, some people are going to be better at producing food and other people are going to be better at producing clothing, right? So let's say there's somebody on the island who is a tailor. And then let's say there's somebody on the island who maybe was a chef, right? So if when we're producing zero food and 10 clothing, that means that the chef is actually, he, he's being at, or she is being asked to make clothing, right? Everybody's making clothing, right? And so to give up and say, well, let's give up, let's go to one unit of food and how much clothing do we have to give up? Well, if we say, okay, well, let's have the chef, he can go or she can go make some food. Well, maybe the chef wasn't very good at making clothing, right? So we only really give up one unit of clothing. So our marginal cost is one when we want to get that first unit of food, right? The marginal cost is low because so there was somebody that maybe wasn't even good at making clothes to begin with. But as we get further and further along, right, and we get to a point where to make that last unit of food to go from three to four, now we're asking the tailor, the, the tailor who makes clothes for a living, right, in the real world. They make clothes for a living, and we're asking them to make food, right? So now we're giving up four units of clothing to get that final piece of food. So that explains why we have an increasing marginal cost, because as we move along the curve, right, not all resources are equally productive. If we could equally trade off resources, right, so let's say hypothetically that we were in a world where we, we just say, okay, well, you know, everybody is equally good at making food and equally good at making clothing. Then the PPF wouldn't look like that. It wouldn't have that boat out shape. It would be like this. It would be a straight line. 